Hello everybody and welcome back to another review of this Oxford United season. It's the final game of 2022 and Oxford were at home to Charlton Athletic. Could they end the season with a win after that pretty sorry drubbing that they had against Peterborough? Well... I'm happy to tell you that they did. They came through it despite some nervy moments in the second half. Oxford United came through with a nice home win. It ended Oxford United 3, Charlton Athletic 1. And Carl Robinson did make changes from that side that lost very, very sorrily against Ipswich. Soundly beat. Haven't seen Oxford lose a game like that in quite a while. And, and he, he was probably right to freshen things up a little bit. McGinty did stay in goal because Eastwood is not quite right. But he left out Stuart Finley, which was a bit of an eye raiser and um, would have been something I would have questioned had Oxford not won this game. Uh, but he brought in Elliot Moore, obviously stayed at centre-back. Sam Long came into centre-back. Anderson came back at right-back. Um, Lewis Bate, who missed the game against Ipswich through illness, was back in the midfield as well. well that was good to see alongside Brannigan and McGuane. Then you up front, you had Matty Taylor leading the line. And on the left, you had Belly Bowden. And on the right, you had Josh Murphy starting his first Oxford United game. So that is encouraging to see. Much maligned James Henry. And if you listen to some Oxford fans on Twitter, they never want him to play again for the club. Well, he wasn't in the match day squad today, but it wasn't anything to do with Carl Robinson listening to those fans. It was because it was for personal reasons. And whilst we look at Oxford and say we haven't had a great season, the same and maybe more so can be saved for Charlton Athletic. Uh, lots of changes for them, including a change of manager with Dean Holden looking to get his first league win as boss. It's four changes for them, for the Addicts. Uh, George Dobson is put in as the new captain of this side, but you had Thomas, Chin, Henry and Stockley all start in this game. And few eyebrows raised by just looking through the, the Charlton Athletic Twitter feed. A lot of people saying like, you know, very youthful side, very inexperienced side. Almost some people saying, is this a Johnson Pate trophy game um, with, with some of the players arrested? So I'm interested to know your thoughts on this, Charlton fans. And looking at the way the game played, you can certainly look at this start in 11 and, and make a good argument to say that's the reason why they, they came second best in this game. But a couple of Oxford old boys in there, uh, Jack Payne, don't really like him very much after he went to Swindon, and Sean Clare. I don't think any Oxford fans like him very much, but they're in there. And I think it's fair to say what we wanted out of this game was, um, yes, we wanted Oxford to play well, but we just needed a win. We've had so many draws and then obviously that disappointing loss. We just needed a win in this game. And the first half performance, pretty much barring a couple of spells of pressure, was fantastic. Maybe as good as we've seen from Oxford United this season. They played some excellent football going forward. First 10 minutes or so, Charlton did start the game in the ascendancy, but when Oxford got hold of this game, a little bit similar to what we saw Ipswich do against Oxford, they really took control of it. Um, Brannigan with the first meaningful chance for the Yellows, where he rattled the crossbar of a free kick from just outside the box. But the pressure ramped up. And the pressure just kept coming from wide areas, mainly from Josh Murphy, his pace, Anderson's pace as well. But Oxford moved the ball so much sharper through midfield. And the first goal came after 20 minutes. And I'm actually going to say it might not be the goal of the season because I still think that um, Joseph's goal against Pompey is probably going to win that one. But this might be the best team goal that we have. A beautiful move from Oxford, sweeping through the thirds. Some great passing through midfield. I got the ball out to Josh Murphy. He's hit a beautiful low cross right across the area. Taylor didn't get on the end of it, but it came through to Billy Bowden at the end. And he had a very simple tap in to put it in. But a beautiful goal from Oxford scored at just the right time we were on top of the game and then we just needed to see if we could kick on from that and the one thing Oxford did get in this game which maybe we haven't had in other games is we definitely got the rub of the green and this one is evident with that second goal that came after 24 minutes again a great switch of play you saw Josh Murphy who was excellent again in this first half really encouraging signs from what we've seen from Josh Murphy based on this performance Brilliant switch of play from the right to the left. He got the ball into Bowden. Bowden drove to the edge of the box. A shot which just hit Matty Taylor. There's been suspicions of handball, but it looked like it's the classic thing where they say a striker's out of form, you need one to just go in off your ass. This looked like that was that one. Matty Taylor celebrated it like he just scored a worldie. He really needed that goal. Oxford needed him to be in the goals, and Oxford needed the second goal, and we got it in this one. But Charlton did have their moments um, in this game. Uh, whenever they got the ball wide, the likes of Clare and the likes of Chin provided some good outlets for Charlton, but they just couldn't really fashion any chances. They didn't really have, there was no real saves for McGinty to make. They couldn't really put any pressure 
on him. Um, but when they did get the ball into good areas, there were some good blocks and some good headers away by Moore, Long and Brown. Anderson looking good going forward, sometimes looking a bit dodgy at the back. But just generally, everybody looked a lot more busy in this Oxford United lineup. And as I say, the passing between that midfield trio of Brannigan, Bate, and McGuane was really, really good as well. They worked, Those three worked really well together. Um, and at halftime, Oxford were really, really comfortable in this game. But you know what? Charlton have got some bloody good players on their bench. Um, maybe they haven't seen it for a lot of the games, and that's why they weren't playing. But Charlton fans, you'll have to let me know why the likes of Raksaki, why the likes of Leeburn, why the likes of uh, Blackett Taylor weren't starting in this 11 because Charlton made three subs at halftime and they made a massive difference. Oxford were careless in this second half. You can definitely see they'd taken the foot off the gas and their sloppiness was taken advantage by Charlton and they had a lot more pace in their side and they able to get into lots of space and started to create chances and they really stretched Oxford's back line and you just sensed that the goal was coming before it did, uh, there were some definitely some areas where the likes of Blackett Taylor got in some good space. Saraksaki got in some good space, but Oxford were able to get blocks or some poor finishing. But then the goal did come. And it was Blackett Taylor who found some wide open on the left-hand side. He got his cross in. Lieburn, unmarked, heads it into the goal. We don't keep enough clean sheets. You felt a goal was always coming. And Charlton were right back into this game in the ascendancy. Oxford were all over the place for a spell in this second half. Um, and really, Charlton should have levelled. There was a great effort by Lieburn. Uh, Raksaki got the ball into him only four minutes after they scored that goal. And he really should have scored. That was their real guilt edge chance to square this up at 2-2. He puts it wide. Remember, Lieburn is their top scorer as well. And he's not starting in these games. It went down as a corner. So McGinty technically gets the save. But it looked like he just put that one wide. Um, and Oxford, as they were all over the place, and you're just thinking this is going to be a horror show 20 minutes. Um, everybody, the usual things we see from Oxford United, really, where we lose composure in a game and nobody really wants to get their foot on the ball and pass it. I did fail to mention that Oxford did make a change. Wiltshire came on for Murphy at half time. We're having to balance the minutes between those two guys at the moment. I didn't really were very impressed by Wiltshire so far. He didn't really impress me in the way that Murphy did, but it's still early in the game. But Oxford as they just struggled to really take the game to Charlton like we did in the first half. Although I still do, do think Taylor played quite well up front and Bowden, when he did get on the ball, was still looking pretty good. But Robinson made some changes and those changes did pay off and Oxford did get that third goal. He brought on Stuart Finley for Javan Anderson and that made a difference, made Oxford more solid. He brought on Odonka up front for Taylor and pretty much as soon as Odonka came on, Oxford got the third goal. Um, Oxford won the ball back in midfield and then again, a nice passing move. I think it was Bowden or it was Brannigan put the ball across. Wilshut shot really should have been saved and dealt with by Maynard Brewer. Well, he did save it, but he spilt it and he couldn't get back. And the ball was just tantalisingly left on the goal line for Odonka to just stab it in for his second Oxford United goal. Great to see Odonka score. And everybody loves the God to get his goals. Um, but yeah, that, that meant Oxford could just breathe a huge sigh of relief. Uh, Charlton did have one other chance through Raksaki, um, where he put the shot wide, but then it was just Oxford really just game managing it and seeing the game out. And thankfully they did. And thankfully we get the three points, the first win in ages. As much as we got worried in that second half, it's important to remember there were very encouraging signs for Oxford in this game. And moving forward, you're hoping Oxford are playing with as much purpose as an intent, whether they're home or away, no matter who they come up against, as they did in the first half of this one. Josh Murphy looks excellent, very promising. Bowden and Lewis Bate in particular, I thought, had great games for Oxford United today. Yes, we lost our way a little bit in the second half, but... We did come back on strong to get that win in the end. So that bodes well if we can get another win against Exeter on New Year's Day. And who knows, we might be able to strengthen this side in January and still make a push for the playoffs. Charlton fans, I mean, it's been a bit of a mess for you this season as well, hasn't it? I mean, Dean Holden's still sort of finding his feet, finding his first 11. And, you know, for me, it just looks a little bit weird why you would leave all your best players, most of your best players, 
on the bench. And you looked a much better side in this second half. But let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think, how this season's going to go. Have you got any worries about going down? I don't think you're going to go down. Um, and do you have any aspirations of where you can strengthen in January to maybe kick on and make a, a playoff charge yourselves? That'll do it for me. Um, thank you very much for watching these videos in 2022. That's the last one of 2022 for me. Please hit like and subscribe on these videos. It helps me out so much. The, the videos in the next couple of weeks may be a bit late. I'm going overseas. I'm going to North Macedonia of all places for two weeks. Why North Macedonia? Well, that's none of your business, but that's where I'll be. So videos may be a bit late coming out on reviews on match days. But as I say, thanks again for watching. Happy New Year, everybody. We can take this win into the new year. Come on, you yellows, and I'll see you soon.